Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. I've got a video for you today on a couple projects that are going to Ginger. And Ginger asked me, Ginger sent me her uh, her Hyper Tough hatchet. It's a nice hatchet. And she asked for Cryptech EMT Red. She wanted a combination of Baldrick Carry, which is on a two point sling, as well as Molly's. And you can see on top we have a simple ceramic rod. This is like a four and a half by three eighth inch or something like that. Uh, but I've retained it on some shock cord. I created a handle. Put an eyelet in it so I can get some shock cord in there. That's a little nod to Jeremiah from Country Prepper Kydex. It was the first one I ever saw doing that, you know, creating a handle for uh, you know large barrel rods or whatever. Uh, if the rod doesn't have a hole in it to run shock cord through, then you have to do something to create retention um, or to be able to fix shock cord for retention. So that little handle idea is, is uh, as far as I know, that's his conception. Um, <clears throat> so we have these little Baldrick attach points I put on the face there. I used one inch D-rings uh, because I thought they would work best for the size of the sheath rather than put on one and a half or two inch D-rings. Uh, so these work just fine. The sheath also has, actually, so as far as the mollies go on here, these are an inch and a half apart. Um, you guys know my spiel, I give it every time. Molly spacing, inch and a half, center to center on each of the loops in the rows of molly webbing. So these are small Gen 3 molly locks. They'll go through two rows of webbing and uh, so you'll have four points of contact essentially. So the one and a half inch spacing, one and a half, three, uh, four and a half, six, etc. All the time I see sheets that are made that are just like whatever width they are, pancake style sheets, molly lock slapped on there. That is not how it works. You can't, you, sometimes you can get away with it if it just happens to be close enough, but you really do have to be intent about measuring that inch and a half uh, multiplier thing to, uh, to make sure that you're always gonna have um, actual molly spacing for your molly locks otherwise you're just kind of wasting your customers money um, so I, I'm pretty passionate about that point I know you guys hear it every time I do mollies but that is a serious no-no in the sheath making world to just put molly locks on willy-nilly so anyway these are on there correctly I think they look nice um, the whole sheath is in the Cryptek EMT red but I put an additional plate on the back not only for reinforcement, but also to give the standoff for embedding the hardware. You can actually see the lower hardware right there. I've extended the plate downward just to make sure that the mollies um, would have a stable platform to connect to. Uh, as far as the draw of this thing goes, you just saw me do it. Straight out the bottom is the way I like to go. I think that's the easiest. You can definitely do it other ways. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, but that's definitely the best. Going back in, I go straight in from the side, or the mouth of the sheath, however you want to call it. And uh, sometimes the blade doesn't quite make it up into the cavern, so you kind of have to snap it down. Just make sure that you don't have any of the part of the blade exposed. That's a that's a safety hazard, obviously. Um, but yeah, this thing came out pretty nice. And uh, what I would recommend for drawing, not only just to go straight out the bottom, but also to use... You can see I've molded these little fins down here at the back and they're really just a thumb push. All it is is a means of spreading the kydex manually so that it makes for an easier escape for the hatchet. So uh, if you're drawing right handed what I'm doing is I'm pulling back toward myself. I find that to be a little easier. Um, so I'm pulling toward myself and pulling straight down at the bottom. And um, what I would do actually since I'm doing it slow motion before I like smack myself in the face with a hatchet. I would actually not do it by the sling unless I was wearing it. I would probably just grab the front of the sheath. And that's, that's pretty stable right there. So I wouldn't call this an easy draw, but it's not difficult. Um, and it's certainly not like, it's not a ballistic one-handed draw or anything like that that you get with nine knives, uh, knife sheaths. This is very different, and the whole process for creating retention is different. So, um, just kind of giving you that little tidbit right now. But 
Again, what I would do, probably just brace the face of the sheath right here, you know, this upper corner, and uh, flex this toward yourself. Pull straight down. It's very easy. All right, so that is the hatchet sheath. I really like this thing. I think that was a cool design she came up with for uh, combined Molly and Baldrick. I haven't done that before. And I think this is the first time I've done a ceramic rod on a hatchet sheath, too. I've definitely done ferro rods, Nano Striker XL, compasses. Uh, I think I might have done an AccuSharp sharpener before, but first ceramic rod. So, anyway, definitely let me know what you think of this down below. <coughs> All right, now we have the Mora Eldris. This is probably one of the best small budget knives. And uh, I think it competes, honestly, with a lot of non-budget knives as well. I personally am not a huge fan of the Eldris, um, partially because I just, I personally don't like blades that small. And, um, you know, that's just, that's just me. But what I do have to say for it is that even with, I've got pretty freakishly large palms and hands, um, even with my massive hands, I have no problem uh, getting a really secure grip on this thing because they they utilized sort of a full width palm swell on this thing and it's got this uh, grippy rubber coating on the outside of here the handle so this thing is supremely easy to get a, uh, a sure grip on so I really am pleased with a lot of that from Mora so that said <clears throat> when you have a knife that has some of that the rubber handle you got to be really careful when you're molding the sheath and when you're working on the retention. Probably best just to remove the knife. <sighs> Excuse me. It's probably best to remove the knife from the sheath uh, because the heat from your heat gun as you are trying to get the Kydex malleable again uh, is enough to actually start to melt the rubber on here. And I experienced it with my own Eldris the first time I was making a sheath for it that you don't even know that it's melted, it doesn't show any signs until you touch it and all of a sudden it just kind of starts slicking away and eroding. Um, so it's really just best straight up remove it from the sheath and then you can use your heat gun to spot heat whatever you need to. Um, anyway, I think this sheath came out exceptionally well. You can see it's got a very nice ballistic one-handed draw. And as far as the attachments on here, another really awesome design that she came up with um, or a combination of accessories, whatever whatever you want to call it. So we have a Sunto Clipper, a Nano Striker XL, and a, an Exotac, or sorry, this is an Exotac Nano Striker XL. This is an Ulti Clip. Uh, the Ulti Clip is meant really for inside the pocket or inside the waistband carry. What it does is it facilitates a secure anchor point that is not dependent on a belt so what you do I would actually recommend even if you do wear a belt not to clip this onto your belt because wider uh, if you clip it onto something wider and close that the spring flexes a little bit too far it starts to gauge it wider and eventually you won't be able to use it on only fabric so um, I would recommend definitely you know whatever you got to do move the belt downward and pull your pants up and uh, clip it on and then you can slip your belt up over the top of the buckle of the ulti clip or whatever. Uh, that's my personal recommendation. Um, I will also tell you a lot of people ask for outside the waistband sheaths with ulti clip with an ulti clip on it and they seem to think that scout carry with just one ulti clip is going to be a good option. Um, I'm not down I'm not a, I'm not dogging anybody I'm just telling you how it kind of works. So number one Anything outside the waistband with an ulti clip, you have to understand, this thing does not do anything to stabilize your sheath. It connects it to your pants, connects it to fabric, and creates an excellent anchor point. But when it's inside the waistband or inside the pocket, your body and your clothing are actually stabilizing it. The clip just creates that anchor point. Uh, so outside the waistband, without that pressure of your clothing pulling against your body, you have this kind of effect. Your sheath can just kind of flop around. Um, it can invert whatever depending on what kind of fabric you know a lot of people want these because if they're not going to be wearing pants with belt loops like athletic shorts or sweatpants something like that 
um, then this is a really good option for clipping onto that material. However, if you're outside the waistband on a material that's really flexible and stretchy, whatever, I really would caution against um, doing an outside the waistband sheath. Uh, I would also caution against doing anything that's heavy, like like a firearm or um, you know just a bigger knife or whatever, outside the waistband. Inside the waistband, it's all good. Um, and even then, you might want to go with two ulti clips. But I've been getting a lot of requests lately for like a scout carry with an ulti clip. Outside the waistband, horizontal ulti clip. And I'm telling you right now, that is just not going to go well. Um, so I'll do it if you want, but I just want you guys to be aware, have that information. And if you do request it, I'm going to give you the spiel. I'm not going to be a jerk about it or anything. I don't mind answering the questions. I love actually educating people on... Uh, sort of all the gear and how it works and all that good stuff. Um, just the teacher in me, I guess, I really enjoy it. So, anyway, um, I just wanted to kind of preempt some of those questions in case you do see this video so you'd be able to make a more informed decision to get the best possible sheath for you. So, okay, looking at the holder for the Nano Striker XL, what I would recommend, I think it goes best this way, although it is bi-directional, this is a fixed Inter, uh, fixed diameter loop all the way through so it can go just as easily inverted or whatever but I think personally it looks nicer to have the uh, whatever you want to call this 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 side of it <laughs> I like this side up near the mouth of the sheath better uh, that way there's less protruding down low it just kind of looks like it fits the profile of the sheath a little better and how it draws what I would do is just brace the bottom of the sheath, push this sucker down, and expose this nice texturing on the outside of the casing for this ExoTac Nano Striker XL. Grab that, you get a really good grip on it because of that texturing, and just pull it straight down. It's very, very easy. As far as the uh, compass goes on here, all this is is a plate. It's got this saddle cut out. You can see the plate also functions as an attach point for the ulti clip. Um, but it's got this saddle cut out so that the clipper, if I can remove it, what have I done? That's in there pretty secure. It's supposed to be easily removable. Well, maybe I gotta put a different spacer in there. I think I might have done when I screwed this. Uh, Nano Striker XL holder on there. I think I might have. There we go. Okay. So, what you're looking at with this is that quarter inch drill hole is actually a secure point for the clipper. The back of this has a little sort of jaw. This goes underneath the plate, and the main housing obviously goes on top of the plate. On the main housing, there is a tooth on there that's roughly a quarter inch wide. So I just kind of find the dimensions and slip this on here until it bottoms out, work it a little bit, you know, twist it a little bit until that tooth sets into the quarter inch hole there, and then it's really pretty secure in place. So you might have to fight it a little bit to go exactly where you want, but listen, you can even hear it click in. That click was the tooth dropping in and the body slapping against the face of that plate. So. Um, Yeah, let me just make sure that this is all right. I really want to make sure she's getting a... Okay, so I think this is just about perfect now. So you slip it in, try to steer it straight on toward the hole, and then come straight back off. The reason why I want to make these compasses removable is because there are metal components on the sheath obviously if the knife is in the sheath as well um, all that stuff is going to mess with the reading of the compass it's going to go magnetic to whatever metal thing is nearby so you need to be able if it's going to be utilized as a compass not just a showpiece an accessory on your sheath um, then it really needs to be removable I think that's uh, pretty much universally true of compasses on um, well really on any of your gear it's almost always going to be metal on some part of your your pack or whatever survival gear you're carrying so all right anyway i know i've talked for about 15 minutes here uh, i would really love your opinion on the eldris 
definitely on this sheath. What do you think of this compact setup? The pocket carry done like this. And um, give me your opinions on this. Baldrick style for a hatchet. You don't see that very often. Um, definitely weigh in down below and let me think let me know what you think of all this gear. So guys, if you liked it, hit that like button. If you like the channel, I ask you to subscribe. Definitely comment down below. Let's get some conversations going. And um, appreciate you tuning in. All right, guys. Stay tuned for the next one. God bless.